We're going to work on expanding vertex to standard form of quadratics. <clears throat> so this is a quadratic, and technically this is in vertex form. Um, vertex form is commonly written as uh, the very first term being called A, the term within the brackets they usually call H, and that's the horizontal place of vertex. And then the final term they sometimes call K, which is the Y value of the vertex, okay? Um, you can use any letters you really want. Just the idea is that when they're arranged in this fashion, the H and the K value tell you the X and Y um, coordinates of the vertex. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it into, oops, we're going to turn it into standard form, which is a common way to write it. Um, and to be able to tell something is in um, is a quadratic, but it doesn't help us too much with graphing standard form. It's just consider it one of the forms. Um, the colors have no relation. I just don't have many colors. Um, a here is going to be the same in vertex, in standard, even in factor form. Your a term is always the same. H is not B, hence why I gave them different letters. K is not C. Okay, but we're going to work on going from vertex to standard, and that's called essentially expanding. So I'm going to take this question I have here, and we're essentially just going to work it out. We have 3 multiplied by x minus 2 squared plus 5. So we're going to apply bed mass. If you apply bed mass to a question like this, um, brackets, okay, I go inside the brackets. Mm, these aren't like terms, so there's nothing I can do within the bracket. Um, after the b in bed mass, we have exponents. Well, I can do something with this, this exponent. This exponent is telling me to multiply the base by itself twice. So when we apply the exponent, it would be x minus 2 times x minus 2, okay? And what is that? Well, that's our FOIL or expansion. Have you done this yet, FOIL? Um, no. Okay, you're about to learn FOIL. So if you have, these are called like um, binomial terms. There's two terms within the bracket. When you go to multiply something like this, you take the first term and you have to multiply it by both of the other terms in the other bracket, and same with the second term, you've got to multiply it by both. Um, there's a thing called FOIL, which you'll learn later, sometimes it's called rainbow method, but a simple way to do it is just take an arrow and make sure you multiply this by both, and you multiply this one by both. Okay? So when we go to do that, I'm going to leave the other things black, and it just means that they're staying the same in terms of colors. Um, our first thing here, x times x. Well, x times x is going to be x squared. Okay, so we've done x and x. Next, I'm going to do x times negative 2. Negative 2 times x is just going to give me negative 2x. Okay? Then I'm going to do the second term in the first set of brackets. Negative 2 times x. I've already done that once. That's negative 2x. And then negative 2 times negative 2. Negative times negative, positive. 2 times 2 is 4. You get positive 4. Okay? And then this is the outside stuff of the brackets. So we've now expanded our bracket. If we look at bed mass, we are still... We're going to actually try to simplify the inside bracket. So let me quickly take a look. And I do have like terms. These two are like terms. They're variables which are the same exponent, and they have coefficients in front of them. There's no like term in the bracket for this, and there's no like term in the bracket for that. So first, I'm going to combine these two. Okay? So we'll say y is equal to 3x squared. Negative 2x minus 2x. Think of it like just subtracting two integers. Negative 2 minus 2 is actually going to give us negative 4x. Okay? The other term, plus 4, stays the same. The plus 5 out here stays the same. That's going to be the hardest part of this. Okay. After that, there's distributive property, which is very similar to FOIL. We're just going to take this 3. This 3 outside means it's multiplied by each of the terms inside. So just like I said with the, uh, sometimes they call it the rainbow method, we just got to make sure this term gets multiplied by all 3 within. So when we go to do that, let me keep these arrows so we don't forget. When we go to do that, um, 3 times x squared is going to be 3 squared. 3 times negative 4 is going to be negative 12x. And 3 times positive 4 is just going to be positive 12. Okay? Essentially what's happened now is the brackets are, are gone. We've expanded, we've dis, um, distributed, so these brackets essentially drop off. So that positive 5, that just kind of slides down to the back of the equation and nothing's really happened to it. Okay? 
And I always, every time I expand, multiply, or anything like that, the next step should always be, let's try to simplify again. So when we expanded those brackets, we simplify. Now that we've distributed, let's simplify. Um, there's only one set of like terms left. It's these two here. Okay, they're both constants. There's no variable attached to them. There's no like terms with x squared, and there's no like terms with x. So the only last thing we can do is combine those two. So we get y is equal to 3x squared minus 12x plus 17. Okay, so according to this, to what I've written here, um, this form here is the vertex form of this standard form. So in other words, these are the exact same parabola. Let's see if I can prove it. There goes my iTunes problems. Um, we'll go into decimals here, and let's see if we can actually write it out. It was 3, x minus 2, x 5. Oops. So y equals 3, x minus 2, squared plus 5. Okay, so there's our parabola. Um, remember, the vertex is 2 and 5, just like we talked about, h and k. Them there. And here we have 3, negative 12, 17. So 3 squared negative 12x plus 17. And if I turn the blue off, it's the exact same. So these are the exact same equation. Okay, just one is in the vertex form and one is in the standard form. Okay.